Hello! Slight change of angle because I realised that the lighting is going to be terrible either way so I might at least have a nice background instead of my bed. So we'll try something new today, we'll see how that goes. Right, so for the last few weeks really I've been pondering on culture and class and all that and I was thinking to try something new. So instead of doing my usual like middle class, very, very Western European centric clothing, like for my 1840s dress, etc., I thought I'd try doing something a bit more folksy and Eastern European. So my oh let me reach quickly. Ooh. So my grandmother actually sent me a collection of like woven tapes like this so I thought these tapes would be very nice to incorporate into an 1890s outfit and that way I still have my historical costuming but in a more folkloric way so the way I'll be doing this is I'll be making my usual I'm thinking of a blouse and dress and skirt set to kind of be one as a dress um, and the idea behind this is that I'll make it a bit more what could have been maybe seen in the 1890s in like a more well-to-do farm environment, like not farm, countryside. So for example the skirt, while still floor length, will be a tiny bit, like a smidge shorter than usual 19th century skirts. And, and I'll be using this tape as decoration. Um, I'm thinking the usual length of mutton sleeves, etc. But yeah, just a little twist and hopefully they'll look really cute and well, I think that'll be a nice way to connect with that slightly more Slavic cottagecore, if you will, aesthetic. And because I'm from Poland, um, I have fa we have, our family comes from, from villages and I, and I started actually collecting um, the scarves my nail got caught in my hair, my scarves and I've been wearing them quite often I think it'll be a nice way to connect so I'll be starting to do that and it'll be nice and black cotton because I still prefer darker colours so black cotton it is and my hair colour will fluctuate throughout this video because I got a new job and I'm actually not allowed to have brightly dyed hair anymore so the red had to go but at the beginning I, st I think there's still some clips of my red hair in so ignore that that's what kind of happened I had to change it Okay, so if you'd like to see this slightly more folkloric twist on 19th century, specifically 1890s fashion, then keep watching. I wasn't initially planning for this to be a two-part video, but as I was editing I realised that the skirt portion itself was going to be about 20 minutes long, and as such, who really needs a 40-minute video? Let's just put this in half, so welcome to part one, I guess. The skirt pattern I decided to use is my well-loved self-drafted pattern from the Keystone Guide. I made this pattern during the first lockdown and made a really well-fitted wool skirt from it, so it was the obvious choice of this project the moment I really decided that I would be doing the mid-1890s. The only modifications that I did was a shortening of the hem by about 5cm or 2 inches for those that like inches. I do not like inches, so I will be using centimeters for the rest of this video inches are the devil, ew, centimeters for the win. I also added a pocket that I forgot to add to my wool skirt, I know, a shame. Um, I was thinking of adding another one to my wool skirt, but that includes seam ripping and no thank you, so this is going to be my walking skirt with a pocket. The fabric that I chose was this heavy cotton fabric that I received for Christmas. Black is always good for long skirts because it doesn't really show too much dirt from walking, which, before anyone says is gross, is very practical as it's kind of impossible to not have your floor length skirt not touch the floor when you walk, sit down, etc. Even with the skirt being shorter than usual, it is inevitable, but it will sweep the floor at times nonetheless. The heaviness of the cotton will also help with maintaining the shape of the skirt and, most importantly for me, who loves the drama, will give it a very nice swoosh.
I wanted to hand sew the tape to the skirt in order to maintain maximum control over the angle. Um, I wanted to be parallel to the floor, kind of, as I was standing, just so it looked neat. Um, I put a lot of effort to make sure this happened, so the tape was placed at exactly 75cm away from the waistline at all times. Had to use the tape measure, and on my tiny floor this was very tricky. As with the sewing machine, it's possible to slip and slide around and distort that line that I had just very carefully measured out. Um, I decided to just take my laptop out, put on this really confusing period film from the 70s, and between concerned glances directed at my laptop, every time a plot line escalated way too quickly, I managed to hand sew the tape together and it was relatively parallel, at least parallel enough for my liking. As I still had some time to spare afterwards, I got the placket done and all that really is is a tiny felt hem and that was done really quickly and in the meantime I finished the movie and oh my god, 70s filmmaking, why would you do that? I think I got whiplash.
For the waistband, all I had to do really is pick the tape that I had already used for the trimming, so that was a no-brainer, and I just measured up my corseted waist measurements, corseted waist measurements, pronunciation, and then I just added some seam allowance, which I think was about a centimeter both directions, and the seam allowance was then pinned down and whip stitched. Um, I didn't really have issues with fraying because it wasn't that kind of tape. Um, all I had to do really is for it not to have too much pressure, I just whip stitched it down and no issue there. The therefore finished waistband was then whip stitched to the skirt itself. I left about a 3cm overhang in the back to overlap the waistband bit more than usual when it is worn for increased strength of waistband because I usually find that the gathers at the back are very heavy and tend to droop basically so I thought having two rows of hooks and bars with a bigger overlap than usual rather than, and rather than, than just the one row would be a bit stronger and it will cause less drooping. Fun fact, um, I despise both sewing and fastenings and gathering skirts or gathering in general, it's just very messy and annoying and long, so let's just, stack, let's just appreciate the sacrifice of me doing both of these steps in one go. With the waistband in, um, that's all that's left is the hem. In order to maintain the same length around the hem basically, so it hangs properly, I decided to basically just plonk the skirt onto the floor and just measure it all around to be 95 centimeters from the waistband to the hem. This was then pinned and stitched on the machine. I considered doing it in by hand like I had done the tape, but I wanted to wear the skirt to Brighton the next day, so I thought to just speed things up and do it by machine. Also, I had run out of bad 70s Polish cinema to watch, so I didn't have anything to put on in the background, so I thought just zoom on the machine and that's it. Nobody has to know, just don't tell the historical accuracy please, yada yada yada, we good.
You'd think that in the last few months, since the last project, I'd have enough time to buy myself an ironing board, however I have not, um, because I'm lazy, so enjoy another shameful recording of me ironing on my bed, attempting to not ba burn my blanket or duvet. Um, thankfully no burning occurred today and my blanket uh, survives to live another day. Well, thank you everyone for watching this first half of this outfit making video for the skirt. I wasn't too sure how to present the final outcome as well. It's not the full project, it's just the skirt and I didn't want to make it too fancy or anything. So I thought have an awkward little twirl at the beginning just so you could see the skirt and I thought a nice way to kind of lean in extra to the whole living on the village and cottage core vibe i thought i would just film myself going about in my garden checking for slugs and um, spraying soapy water on aphids because we are currently having an aphid infestation i think it's a london-wide thing but i'm not quite sure but they are very pervasive and they're on everything so i guess here you go enjoy that and hopefully i'll see you in part two